You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Dr. Don will offer challenging and thought-provoking discussion about the many ways you can use to discover more about yourself and others. You'll learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can move forward in life more self-aware and free. And now, here's the host of The Secrets of Life, Dr. Don Fouts. Well, hello. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and I'm here with good friend Vincent Lapadula. Good morning. And this is The Secrets of Life. And my practice is Donald Fouts and Associates. I'm a life coach, counselor, and mediator, and we're located in Bel Air, Maryland. Also, we're being brought to you live by the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're delighted that you've chosen to listen in. Now, in past shows, uh, we've addressed many different issues of personal crisis, such as divorce, addiction, and recovery, affairs, grief, abuse, domestic terrorism, and so on. And the one commonality that these often it, these issues often have is that they all have a component of failure and or loss in them. You know, we all live with that, but it's what we learn from these experiences that are most valuable in life. So on today's show, we'll be discussing some of our common mistakes in life and those episodes we call relapse. They involve a wide spectrum of issues. And with many of these, uh, that result, they result in a feeling of failure. And uh, I remember hearing a quote, and I couldn't really put a name on it. I thought I recognized a voice. I thought it was Ray Lewis. No, take credit but, for it. Take credit okay. for it. It's a good quote. <laughs> but it's a, you're saying most people... Don't give up because of failure, because it's not the failure that stops us. Instead, it's because most people stop at the first failure. And I think that's a really powerful statement because often that's really the case. Now, the successful ones use failure as a learning experience and really do not let failure define who they are. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of those issues of failure and uh, what we do with that and how we can actually grow from that. Right. And they, you know, there's you use the word relapse and people that are familiar with uh, alcohol and drug rehabilitation are going to say, OK, yeah, relapse is a part of that, uh, the, the recovery process. And to that, I would say it doesn't have to be. I mean, yes, it, may, it might be part of the process, but not for me type of uh, attitude. And so, so we, Don, we take a look at the different ways that uh, people can uh, guard themselves against that or to uh, once it happens and uh, uh, if it happens, what, what, what we got to do to change things. I, I, I firmly believe that in my life, and in your life, and I can speak for, there's no such thing as grass. We're either, there's either progress or there's regress. Mm. So if, so if I say, you know, what's happening right now, I say nothing. You know what? I, I'm not, I'm not grassing. I'm regressing. <laughs> so there, the end. I think one of the things that a lot of people miss the mark on, I did for a long time, was, you sit back afterward and go, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's a definitive reason for it. And it's do you really want to know why it happened? Or are you just finding yourself, you know, finding yourself you know, shoeless on the side of the road um, and, and, and and just wondering how do, how do you get out of that? Are you asking are you asking how did this happen? Are you asking how do I get out of this pain right now mm -hmm. and not recause it? 
Yeah, and I think the, uh, I mean, as we go through life, and I like like that grass, yeah. that's, that's something, you know, the, you know, static grass or something yeah. like that, where you're not doing anything at all. But I think, yeah, it is one of those things. And with the relapse, we tend to, we tend to do associate that with um, uh, addiction and recovery. But really, relapse is any time that we're falling back in a behavior that we have made up our mind we don't want to do or are trying not to do that. And uh, we we continue to do that. And when we think, man, why did I do that again? I always want to do or not do that anymore. Um, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that one of the things that I think we we tend to do is if we are not rock bottom, we are uh, not really motivated to change that much. Uh, because whenever we are at rock bottom, the only way to look is up. And uh, I know whenever I was uh, working in law enforcement, there was a saying from the fellows that were incarcerated, and actually the, the law enforcement officers as well, saying that's they know where Jesus is because everybody finds him in jail. Right, right, right. He's in jail with the rest of us. <laughs> All right. Uh, the and. You know, as you said, Don, the, the difference between uh, it's this is not just about uh, alcohol and drugs. It can be relationships. I, I, um, um, I know a young woman that uh, had three different relationships in in the, the past two years or in a two year period. And every time she'd come back and she'd say, he cheated on me. He mm. cheated on me. He che- well, there's consistency in that uh, that that says, what is it about you that you have to, you know, this is not, please understand, this is in no way um, condoning the behavior that happened to you. But what is it about you that uh, is your picker broken? That's right. And, and, and how do you how do you make the, the necessary changes? And it, it's, you know, we'll get into this. We got we 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 a little time to talk about this. But, um, it, you know, how much is the right time? How much time is the right time to go? Oh, I'm disappointed. Oh, I screwed up again. Well, you know, I'll never I'll never and all that self-defeating behavior. How many, good you're allowed that. But for how long? And then what do you do with it? Yeah, you really have to kind of figure out what, I mean, it's like if you stab yourself in the eye with an ice pick, you know not to do that again. <laughs> but I tell with the, with the uh, young women that I work with a lot in uh, relationships and trying to figure out what's going on with them, um, I usually tell them, I said, you know, you didn't, and I think I've said this before, but you need to make two lists in life. And, and as far as your relationship is concerned, uh, when you are beginning to meet somebody, you don't even have to have them yet, but you need to have this in your pocket uh, before that happens. And I tell them, you need to make two lists. One list are all the qualities that you want in a person, a mate. And um, just list those all out. I said, that's going to be a nice long list because there's a lot of things you really want in someone. Uh-huh. And said, when you finish that list, you may have to make list number two. And list number two are all the characteristics that you hate in somebody. And they're the red flag characteristics. And uh, those are the ones that will cause the most problem. And typically, we look past those and we say, oh, well, that's not, you know, we'll change them as we get going. (laughs) And it never happens. Whatever that thing is, I tell him, if, if he hits one of those things of your red flags, you have to have the courage to say, I'm sorry, but this is not going to work out. And unfortunately, most people will say, well, I don't, I'm going to be alone forever. Yes. And he's the one. Just give me time. He'll change. And, and, and it's not going to. It's not no. going to happen. Now, by the way, all those characteristics, if you've got a list of characteristics that are um, that are just you'd love to have an mate, and a mullet is on that, scratch it off. All right, scratch it. That's got to go. Yeah. That, 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 that has to go. You are relapsing now. No mullets now. <laughs> a period of deterioration after a period of improvement is mm-hmm. the is, is, is the definition of you, 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 you are moving forward. Now you ain't. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. And there are times within our lives that other people see it and say something to us about you're heading, man. You're heading down a dark alley. Um, you're 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 hedging. You're not doing something as part of your as part of your success that you used to do. And my uh, inclination, most people would say the same thing. No, I'm okay. Things are things are okay. And if you say I'm okay long enough, you're going to find yourself back into that I'm not okay. 
Mm-hmm. And that goes to the areas of listening to the people that you trust, trusting the people that you listen to. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things that we have to realize. It's something you cannot put on autopilot. Right. Because you're going to drift off and you're mm-hmm. going to go down the wrong path and wrong road and you're going to say, well, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. And uh, But it takes a lot of diligence and the purpose to be able to do that uh, on a you know consistent basis to be able to say, no, here's my goal. Here's my path. Right. And, um, so we've got to, you know, we've got, we've got some things. First, you to, let's take a look. When we come back, let's take a look at the relapse, the actual process of relapse, uh, and then and then springboard that into how do you recover from it? Okay, yeah, we'll do that when we come back. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Don, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. I'd like to remind you that if you would like to call in during this show, uh, that uh, you can do that on our toll-free number of 866-451-1451. It's 866-451-1451. Also, if you would prefer to contact me directly at Donald Fouts & Associates in Bel Air, Maryland, you may do so by going to my webpage, which is donaldfouts.com, and that's donaldpfouts.com. My email is don at drdon.me, or you may call my office at 410-776-7656. Now, we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And right before the break, we were talking about how we struggle in relapse and uh, how those things kind of mount up on us. When we go into relapse, we, we, we tend to kind of uh, make these mistakes that cause ourselves uh, pain. But when we go through that, if we go through that successfully, we learn a number of things about what relapse can mm-hmm. do for us. Uh, one is we, we learn about empathy, you know, what it's like to live you know, with our self-induced pain and failure. And uh, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, I was just yeah. going to say that you know, it's just to, it's just for qualification here that, uh, you know, when we're talking about a relapse, we're not just talking about uh, whether a drug or alcohol issues. It's mm-hmm. any kind of behavior that you're working to change. If it's uh, losing weight or going to the gym or stop mm-hmm. smoking or, or, or stop being taken advantage of any type of sexual misconduct that you have in your life or just just being a bum. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you start to. Uh, 
uh, you start to make progress. Uh, it's a phrase that was used a lot by my spot, my uh, my mentor and sponsor. Mm-hmm. You know, said, don't be a bum today. And, <laughs> it, and um, but if any of those things that you've made progress in. Now, by the way, you, you say you're talking about learning empathy. I, I know this, and you've probably seen this a lot in your practice as well. People that after a relapse or a period of uh, of just it's, it's just Go back off, just off the beam. I'll say to him, tell me what happened. And the honest answer is they come up with this. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And what that tells me is that they don't know. They didn't have a plan. So they can't point back to here's when things went off the rails because they weren't following anything other than to say, I'm not going to smoke any longer mm-hmm. or I'm not going to cheat on my wife any longer, but didn't have the plan in place. So you started to talk about the empathy, gaining the empathy uh, after uh, uh, on the return of a relapse. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's it's I think it's kind of like what you're saying. It's We turn the monitor off. We okay. just don't even we don't even recognize what's going on, or we just let it go on autopilot, and we just don't care. But uh, once we once we are faced again with the relapse or the self induced type of failure, uh, that kind of flips the button on again, and I say, how did that happen, and why wasn't I aware of that, or why wasn't I forewarned of that? But I think it's mainly just kind of just turning things off and just being stupid for a while. Anybody who has gone through divorce knows what that feeling of failure is, right? It just is one of those things that when you go through the divorce, it's like, oh, my goodness, who am I now? Because my whole identity has been changed. And I don't think that's any different from any other relapse. Right. And I think that uh, um, when when we're talking about, you said, stay the course and and continue what you're doing. I firmly believe that tomorrow is the enemy of today. Because given the option of doing something that is, in my perception, difficult and getting the option to do it today or tomorrow, guess what? Tomorrow is the best day to do that. And if if I do that, and I'll use this, going to the gym, man, that is like oh, <laughs> killer for me. I know that I feel better afterward. I know that uh, it, uh, my health is uh, my health and my sanity are in a much better place. And after I after I work out, I say, "Wow, that you know, I'm sore, but I feel good. Why why have I gotten away from this? Why am I not doing this?" And it's because I don't have a plan. I don't follow a plan, mm-hmm. and um, and I, and I'm guilty of that. And I say, you know, people say, well, why haven't you been here in a while? I don't know. Well, (laughs) that's the answer. The answer is I don't know because I don't have a plan and I don't follow the plan. That's the biggest thing. Um, He who fails to plan, plans to fail. Exactly. Exactly. Well, another thing that uh, is, I think, one of the things we learned from that is we have an opportunity to find out how much our friends really care about us mm-hmm. right? and, uh, and what lengths they'll go to, to, uh, to try to help, even though we're embarrassed and most of the time we don't want to help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They will be there for that. Yeah. And the, um, um, you know, the, I have, I have a friend that I, I talked to and I said, uh, why don't you, why don't you reach out when this happens? Why, why, why won't you, you know, when I say to people, you can call me anytime. And I mean that. I worked internationally. I used to get calls from people at two in the afternoon, their time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be three in the morning for me. But I yeah, I said, call me anytime. We'll, we'll walk through this together because I've walked through your future. And, and when I said to this gentleman, I said, why don't you call me? He says, I don't know. I said, you know what? I know. Here's why. Because you thought for some reason, some reason, uh, and I don't know where this came from, that I'm going to say to you exactly what the voices in your head are already telling you, Mm -hmm. that you're not worthy, that that, that you're less than, that you'll never amount to anything. And those are self-induced voices. Mm -hmm. The source of information and where that's coming from is not reality. So, and that's one of the reasons that, that people will... We'll end up where they were before and say, and say, I don't know how I got here. Wow. Yeah, that's really right. We'll, we'll kind of take on a little more of that as when we come back from the break. 
and uh, we'll uh, kind of take a look at uh, you know said change our focus, That's man. Right, yeah. Change our focus and change our reality. So this is The Secrets of Life, and I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Don Feltz, and we are back. You're listening to The Secrets of Life, being brought to you live by the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So before the break, we were uh, talking about relapse and in the context of many issues, uh, not just in addiction and recovery, but any time that we go back and repeat a behavior that is detrimental to us uh, is kind of like a relapse, and we're, we're doing it mostly unconsciously. Right. And right before the break, we were, Vincent was saying about, you know, how we tend to not want to report what we've done because right. of embarrassment, things like that. And it's really that kind of behavior goes all the way back to childhood to where we're afraid that, OK, we've done something. Um, I'm going to have to own up to it and face it. And I really don't want to do that because it's embarrassing and it's hurtful. And I feel like that this other person is going to punish me in some way. Exactly. And, 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 and so, you know, it's, we say it all the time, you know, say, you got to you got to know what happened. And if you don't know what happened, find out. Mm-hmm. And, and you just summed it up into into the, um, um, you know, it, it can come back to our behaviors and that we learned at, at, at such a sun, such a young, tender age. Uh, that then turn into adulthood triggers mm-hmm. for for a behavior to for a behavior to return uh, in, in the form of a relapse. Yeah, you know, it really does, and, and we don't we're not even conscious of that, but that's really what happens to us. We uh, we tend to revert back to those childhood beliefs, and uh, that kind of scares us more than anything because we knew we were powerless at that time, mm-hmm. right? And somebody else had control of everything. And you, Don takes unbelievable notes in it. And so he, he, this point that, he, that he's making here, it's just, you know, when when somebody's trying to figure out what, what they could have done to prevent it. And, um, and, and you know, it's, it's, for instance, in the case of someone that goes back to drinking after a period of, of, uh, of not drinking or, or you know, just being dry, uh, they, uh, you know, they say, well, I just kind of found myself. In a bar and say, no, no, what, your relapse started months ago, mm-hmm. weeks ago, a, a long period of, because the, the, the slow fading of the determination began before you knew it. It's, it, it's the boiling a frog yes. mm-hmm. type of analogy that you've used before. Mm-hmm. Which for people that don't know is if you, if you, if you have a pot of boiling water and 
Oh, yeah, the, Pete is going to call here, right? but this is an analogy only. But if you have a if you have a pot of boiling water and, and set a frog into it, it'll jump out immediately. But if you have uh, a pot of warm water and raise it by one degree over a period of time, the, the frog will not realize the change in their environment, and and that's how we are when it comes to morally rehensible and and just bad behavior it, 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 across the entire spectrum that s- nothing happens if nothing happens mm-hmm. and something happens if nothing happens right. which means we end up back in the same the 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 uh, the, the regression period right and i think that one of the things i've said before too is you know we have like 5 seconds in, to make a decision a correct decision And uh, often that five seconds goes by so quickly. But uh, if we do not make the right decisions in about five seconds of time, our brain begins to wander and starts looking for other alternative solutions. And uh, and usually they're more comfortable and they're kind of things that we like to do. And it just leads us down this wrong path. So we really need to be able to identify quickly what is good for us and what is not good for us. And that's where I think things really break down because we're not able to identify this is good, this is not. And I need to stay away from this not or the alternative one. All right. And, and, and I am the worst person to define what is good and what is healthy for me. I really am mm-hmm. because you know, as, as, as my sponsor – always told me was if I am the smartest person in the room, I am in the wrong room. <laughs> I'm going to take the easier way. I'm going to take the way that makes sense to me because of what's been programmed in me since forever mm-hmm. in, in, in my short few years on this planet. Um, and, and so having mentors, having people around you that can help you and, and and have your best interest at heart that that just wants you to succeed for no other reason than you know, maybe it's your health. Maybe it's I have a friend that uh, that, that that wants to right now to be you, to be helped with uh, a eating plan. I just want to see him succeed because I don't you know, I want to be there as a father for his children. Mm-hmm. And unless he gets healthy, that's not going to happen. Yeah, and it takes a bit of learning to try to determine what's good and what's not. And it always brings me back to a time when I was in law enforcement. I was talking to some um, agents, U.S. agents that uh, in the Treasury Department, and they were, their specialty was uh, detecting um, counterfeit money. Mm -hmm. And I asked them at that time, I said, how do you guys learn how to do that and uh, to be able to detect counterfeit? And he said, well, he said, what they do is they put us in a room with real money. And Mm -hmm. all we do is study real money. We don't even look at counterfeit. So we study it over and over and over again. And when we study money like that, we can tell real money from the counterfeit immediately. So we can look at money and we can say, that's good, this is not. That's good, this is not. Okay. And because they know the, the right thing more than anything else, they can tell what the bad thing is. And, uh, and I kind of look at that as the way we probably need to handle some of these behaviors in order to, to not have relapse, to be able to identify where those things are that we need to avoid. Right. Right. Great. And, you know, so, and that takes, in, it takes preparation and it take, it, it's simply have a plan, work a plan. We've, we've said this before. And, and when, when relapse happens or when there's a, a setback of any kind, you, you have to have to assess and honestly open yourself up to the feedback that says, what is the behavior that led up to this? What coping mechanism did I use? Did I did I do really, really well on an eating plan that I was following and then convince myself I can have my cheat meal and, you know, I'm a whole life challenge. So I'm going to take a whole pie, you know, a whole pizza or something. You know, always have tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow again, tomorrow <laughs> is the enemy of today. <laughs> yes. And, and so, um, but the, the good news is, man, it's so depressing we are today, but the <laughs> great news is that 
we have seen successes in everyone. We've seen successes mm-hmm. in ourselves and, and with the help of, uh, of our mentors. And there is a way to succeed to change the past. Uh, you, mm-hmm. had, you had one example of one of your, one of your um, uh, uh, close friends and that uh, had a history of their picker being broken. Mm-hmm. And now that they're, they're starting to see some, some real changes by identifying where their where their skills were askew right. and, and their triggers. Yeah, and it's it's one of those th- those red flag things. And we, mm-hmm. We'll kind of touch on that maybe when we come back again and move on with some more here. So we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to The Secrets of Life. This is BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts with Vincent Lampadula, and we'll be coming right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. All right. Hey, Don, let me, uh, we, we, we're at Secrets of Life. Your host is Dr. Don Faust. I'm Vincent Lampadula. And Don, um, before we went into the break, you were, you were talking about, uh, you had brought up the, uh, the red flags. And this is in part in relationship where you had said before, here's the list of wants and here's the deal breakers and, and the red flags can fall into that. Is that is it correct? Right. Yeah, it really is. And um, just kind of reminds me, I've been working with a young woman uh, recently who uh, has had a really rough life and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of uh, bad partners mm-hmm. who were abusive and and uh, just it was just been terrible for her. And uh, now she is now free of them, but she's now wanting to find out if she can kind of get back into the relationship uh, realm. And uh, so I told her, I said, I want you to make us two lists, one of all the characteristics that you want in a mm-hmm. partner and uh, ones that will make you healthy and, and feel great. And also the list of red flags, which are those characteristics that you cannot tolerate in someone. And uh, I said, because if you allow that to happen, that will be the issue that you're going to be dealing with. So uh, after a little while, um, she came back to me and she said, man, she says, I'm starting to identify red flags all over the place. She said, I met this one person and he did something that I thought, whoops, I can't do that. See you. Bye. And then another person, she did the same thing. And she says, I'm, I'm really seeing them now. I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that kind of goes back to what we're saying about having a plan, kind of figure out what I need to do ahead of time and then stick to it. Right. In the, in the case of relationships, having that, I know the first time that you have to do it, 
uh, it's 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 always a oh my gosh but I'm going to be alone the rest of my in, my life I'll never find him he's the perfect man or she mm-hmm. is just unbelievable she's everything that I've ever wanted what do you mean she just stepped over that guardrail and just you know she you know your your non negotiables included you know, um, you know cheating mm-hmm. and and well but she'll change she she'll fall madly in love with you. no you you're doomed <laughs> to fail um, and so breaking that pattern again from childhood where where these are learned mm-hmm. and then to start to move forward and and in both of the cases that we've we've mentioned the constant is having someone to bounce these ideas off of. You know, and we've said this before. I've said this before where I, I would come back with, with situations in my life that I knew were going to solve the, lo- the world's problems, the problems that I had in my life. And I would lay them out in great detail to my sponsor. And he would listen to my diatribe, mean, excuse me, my sharing opening, honestly. <laughs> and his response would be, great plan. We're going to make that plan B if ours doesn't work, but I've got a different one. Mm-hmm. And I had to learn to follow what he said. Mm-hmm. And every time I did, I was sometimes like a pinball bouncing off the bumpers, but he was there and he'd say, okay, here, here. he was the flipper mm-hmm. in that analogy and would just get me back in the game. Yeah, it's really important to be able to do that. I um, I, I think we all need to, to do that because we all have failures and we all kind of fall down and wonder why we're doing that. But it usually is because of a habit or something that triggers us. And uh, those triggers are many that, that can trigger us in, in how we believe, how we behave and all that. All right. And uh, identify identify a list of, of those triggers for yourself uh, realistically. A realistic, if, you know, is is it a trigger for me to go into a bar that doesn't serve food, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, why, why, why else would I be in a bar? You know, and and so, or is it uh, uh, a situation where I can be a, where I am alone with um, with other with women? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, is that a trigger for someone? Is that you know, are these situations identify them? And be honest in your identification and know that you're not going to get them all right. uh, and be open to say, oh, that could have been bad. Where do I need to put a, a guardrail in? Yeah, and it's it's uh, one of the other things that kind of complicate that is whatever kind of stress we're living under at the moment. Mm-hmm. Because usually when we're in stress, we tend to want to try to get out of that as soon as we can. And usually we use all kind of different other methods to uh, try to relieve ourselves of the stress. So stress can be a huge trigger in people's lives. Uh, it, there's even a chemical reaction in stress that uh, for women, um, because the way our brains are wired up, if women are under really strong stress, they become very uh, emotionally charged and they have a high emotional reaction. When men become stressed, uh, the chemical change happens in us where our testosterone gets reduced and changed to estrogen. And mm-hmm. when that happens, we become fearful and we we react in that way. And we'll either be withdrawn or we'll have anger or whatever the case is because that's the way we – we deal with things as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it, and it's it, this goes to uh, learning to manage your self talk. Mm-hmm. All right, and that is if you use the phrase "yeah, but" in anything that we've said today, don't. <laughs> Pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm different. Yeah, but you don't understand. He is perfect. Yeah, but he said to me he won't do that again. Yeah, I I know I'm not going to meetings, which is something that's part that I that I plan to do for my recovery. Yeah, but it, if you use that phrase, stop doing it because that's going to that's that self talk. That's that voice in your head that's just going to chip away and chip away and chip away until you find yourself in a situation. Like the past where you've regressed and, and you don't have an answer for what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the plan that we need to develop is what happens when I feel pressure? 
Mm-hmm. Or, you know, what happens when a life event takes place that I'm not ready for? And how do I respond to that? And then be able to follow that up with actually following your plan and making sure that that's going to happen correctly. Right. Um, if we don't prepare for it, we're never going to be able to use it. Right. And what do we what do we do when it happens? All right. That's, you know, this is the people that are successful in coming back from 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 failure, from from uh, from slips, from falls are, you know, they, one of the first things that they'll do is that they'll they'll limit the amount of time that they're going to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can only beat myself up uh, about this for a day. That's 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 what it is. I'm still going to feel disappointment, but now I have to say, what next? Now what? Move on. That's it. Doesn't mean you're still not going to be wrapped into it. Whether it's whether it's divorce, whether it's whether it's uh, I, you know again the the um, the gym, the working out, the the, the eating right, the uh, the addiction. I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. I, I I had a I had a slip or I had a a, a relapse. I'm, it's only a failure if I let it be a failure. Right. If if I'm going to live it and see, that's the difference for most people. They, you know, they, oh, I'm just in a rut. I'm going to I'm, I'm in a rut. I'm in a rut and I'm just bouncing off. The only difference between a rut and a grave <laughs> are the dimensions. That's right. Right. But some of us will find a way to get into once we're in that rut and go, that's oh, not so bad down here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm going to start measuring for drapes or that's something. Right. So how do we break <clears throat> through that? Well, I think the one thing, you know, we have uh, this feeling when we have a relapse or a failure in whatever it is, whether it's just a behavioral issue or we've had an affair or it's drug or whatever the case may be, drug or alcohol. um, I think it's really important to know that when that happens, you really don't go back to square one. No. It's it's just not it. It's you're you're continuing on in your recovery process. Sure. It's just part of that. You got to use those tools that you gained to that point. Let's talk more about that when we come back. We will. All right. After the break, we'll continue with our topic, and this is the secrets of life. And I hope you can stay with us. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and we're here with BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back after these messages. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back. You're listening to the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and I am your host, Dr. Don. And we'll continue on with our topic today, which is on failure and relapse, and falling down, so to speak. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we're glad to have you with us. 
<clears throat> now the uh, uh, you know there was a guy that wrote once in a letter and remember those things they were you know, with a pen and paper and stuff and he said uh, I am the most miserable man living if what I feel were equally distributed to the whole human family there would be not there would there would not be one cheerful face on this earth. Uh, it was because he had been um, uh, sent to war, and he was sent to war as a captain and returned as a private. Mm. Um, so you could say that guy's his life is kind of circling the drain, except for the fact he became our president as Abraham Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> that's his story. You know? And so it's it's more of not giving up. It's about what what you learned. In the failure of, you know, where this is, and we were talking before about you're not back to square one. Right. You're not, you, 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 you have gained knowledge through this process. If nothing else, you've learned not what, what not to do mm-hmm. um, in a big way, in a very spectacular way. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Um, there, there are other things that you know, learn to manage that self talk. You know, learn, learn what you need from what you do. There's, you've heard the the parable before, but the the, the guy um, that's presented with two doors, and he say, he's taught that uh, one door is the door to your freedom, the other door behind it is there is a tiger. Uh, mm. Choose wisely, my friend. <laughs> and and of course, on the first try, he chooses the tiger, and the tiger mauls him, and he's just he, he does every takes everything in his power to 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 close the door and come back on the side, and he's blood, bloodied and he's bruised, and he he just had a fight with a tiger, so he has a second chance to to choose, and he chooses the same door. You ask what are you doing? Why are you choosing? There's a tiger behind you. He said, yeah, but maybe this time he was sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> and, 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 and so some, sometimes it's – that's why we need the, the external forces in our life. In other words, the people that can stand, stand next to you shoulder to shoulder and say, dude, that was stupid. <laughs> And, and help um, and help regain you – know, here's what we've learned to this point. Here's what worked in your life. Here's what didn't work. Pick from list A, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, pick the other door the next time. Leave the tiger alone. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's great. I think also one of the things that we are fearful of in in our failures or relapse is uh, feeling that I'm not going to be able to fulfill my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's so many people that really don't even know if they have a purpose Right. And that that's one of those things that really causes some complication in uh, in kind of fending off relapse and mistakes and things like that because we really don't have a great direction in life. Right, and that's so. Now all people are not going to start feeling the pressure. Oh my gosh, I have to have a life plan. I have to. No, <laughs> just you have to have you have to have life skills that are positive and healthy. Because if they're not, they're going to be negative and unhealthy. That's pretty simple. You know, mm-hmm. Even a mook like me can figure out something like this. Now, in, in, in a relapse, the probably the hardest thing that I've learned is the forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, forgiving myself. Uh, because I always, I must, I, I, I have to be the lowest form of low. All of that, and again, it's that self-talk. Um, and so learning to, to, to say, it, say it out loud to someone else gives me the opportunity to find out that those words are just that. They're just words. They're coming from me, which is not the greatest source of information. <laughs> Um, so, and, and in, in, in recovering from a relapse of any kind, it's, so it takes that, it, it takes to being able to, uh, you know, not listen to that voice and, and, and forgive myself and appreciate and accept that there's fear going forward mm-hmm. and how to manage that fear. Yeah. And I think one of the, one of the biggest issues, and I, I deal with folks who've, you know, kind of dealing with affairs and things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one question that usually they can't answer is, why did you do it? Right. They, they don't know. They have no clue as to why they did that. I mean, they have all kind of excuses, but mm-hmm. that they really aren't sure why they did that. 
Um, but it, you can recover from it, and there are many people who have done that, and uh, many other people that are graciously forgiving. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about this? Uh, the statement is: is there a difference between recovery and recovered? Yeah, that's almost it's almost semantics to me. I mean, what's your um, you know they uh, it, within a twelve step program? There's there are a lot of people. Or the uh, conventional wisdom is that you are recovering, you're you're recovering from an illness, mm-hmm. and there are other people that say, well, you know, if you go to the hospital, if you break your arm, uh, you know, you. Uh, um, you know, you, you put it in a cast and, and, and in six, eight weeks, you're, you're recovered from that. My thought process is I'm not going to get caught up in the words, number one. Mm-hmm. But say, for instance, I, I'm shot, right? All right. You know what? I'm going to recover from that bullet wound, but I'm never going to be bulletproof. That's the difference between oh. recovered and recovery for me. Good. Well, uh <clears throat> Talk more about this Talk topic. About more, when and we... uh, we'll come back in just a short while. Yeah. Be right back. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Well, we're back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life, broadcast to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So just before the break, we were continuing our discussion on relapse and failure uh, or mistakes that we made in life. And uh, I think that one of the things we, we really want to look at is, is uh, you know, you need to ask yourselves, what am I making this re- relapse mean about me and about my life? And the meaning can be the difference between having the keys to freedom or the finality of holding your own death certificate. Yeah, I love that. I love that. The um, and going into the the, the actual um, the relapse period happens long before the act. When we're uh, when we're talking about uh, drinking, for instance, going back to drinking, uh, that's the that's the finality of the relapse. That's when you've put a drink in your body. Uh, the relapse has been going on for a long time. Remember this: that shame. Shame thrives in secrecy, it's in, in the dark. All right, until it's brought to light, it can't. It, it will just continue to grow. It's like a mold uh, or a cancer until you bring it right, right into the light. So, bring it out there. Don't listen to the self talk. Start to grow. Forgive yourself. And own your story. Rob said it a few shows back. It's about you control the narrative, and the narrative can be. I'm learning from this, and I am going on, and here are the steps that I'm going to take. Right. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, and it's, uh, it's kind of like one of those issues that we just need to continually keep in mind. If we're not thinking about it, it's going to overrun us. And uh, we have to be prepared for an attack at any moment. Yeah, so a relapse is simply a setback from that period of improvement. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a failure. Don't let it define you. Get back on the horse I, I know, for whatever. Use whatever uh, analogy you want to use, but do not allow this to define you. You are better than that. Right. And and you can be better than that and you can be all that you really want to be. But it just does take some discipline. Absolutely. And um, and learning how to get back up. And if you fall off the horse, maybe get a bicycle next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that would be what we really need. That's the secret of life right there. Get a bicycle. That's right. Well, it looks like that's we're just about out of time for today. Uh, I want to thank you for being with us. Yeah. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to have you all. Uh, listen, and uh, we've just enjoyed this so much. Now, if you prefer to contact me, uh, please do so. I'd love to hear from you. You may uh, do that by going to my webpage, which is www.donaldfouts.com, and that's Donald P F O U T S dot com. Or you can ma- email me, and I'd be happy to respond to you. And email me at Don at drdon.me or don at drdon.me and uh, if you do that I'll get back to you as soon as possible or you might might also want to call my office at 410-776-7656 now my specialty is doing relationships I uh, kind of I'm saying I'm a relationship doctor and uh, I do a lot of work with relationships uh, a lot of work with uh, different folks and different situations. and uh, But I think that uh, once we have a plan, that's our main thing. We can really work if we are able to plan things out and we know what's going on and uh, just continue so, on. And, and so you've got to uh, contact Dr. Don and, and let him help you develop that plan and build the strong foundation for the future that you want mm-hmm. and you can grow in. Um, now, hey, I, I'm going to I'm going to roll out of here in a second. I just want to say thank you, Don. This has been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Abraham, for our, our team producer. Mm-hmm. And be sure to do something nice for someone today and try not to get caught. All right. Have a good day. This is Dr. Don. See you later. This has been The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Tune in each week and learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can become the best person you can be. Here on Dr. Don Fouts, The Secrets of Life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.